Today was the day that I was supposed to post my Flashback 2 review, but instead of making my way out of the alien infested jungle, I spent most of Thanksgiving trying to catch a damn turkey. So, with no reviews to post, what am I supposed to do now? I mean, I already posted a video looking at this week's PlayStation Plus games, and you probably saw the newest Nintendo Switch Online Review Crew episode, so what's left? Oh, yeah, I guess now that I think about it, I did hear about Konami releasing a Felix the Cat collection on PlayStation 5, Switch, and PC, so I guess we could talk about that. It'll apparently feature both the Game Boy and the Nintendo Entertainment System version of Felix the Cat, which were released in the early 1990s. That's cool news, I guess, but are either of these games actually worth playing? To answer that question, I decided to flip through the pages of Electronic Gaming Monthly, Game Pro, Nintendo Power, and more classic magazines to see what the critics said back when these games first came out. So go and grab your bag of tricks, because this is yet another episode of Konami Review Crew. Long before there was Mickey Mouse or Bugs Bunny, there was Felix the Cat. Created all the way back in 1919 by Pat Sullivan and Otto Mesmer, this wide-eyed black cat was the first fully realized animal character in the history of American film animation. He and his bag of tricks influenced generations of cartoon lovers and artists, and you can still feel his impact on the industry more than a hundred years later. And considering that he started out in black and white shorts, it really only makes sense for us to start with his short adventure on the monochromatic Game Boy. Unfortunately, there just aren't a lot of English language reviews for this portable Felix. I suppose we could turn to a German magazine like Mega Blast, who gave it a 73%, or Playtime, which went a little higher with an 83%. That there's always the Dutch magazine Power Unlimited, which gave it a solid 7 out of 10. These aren't bad options, I suppose, but I actually want to be able to read the reviews, not just because I used a translator to get the gist of what they were saying. So instead of doing that, let's go ahead and check in with Nintendo Power. Giving the game a so-so 3.3 out of 5, the editors felt that the graphics ported well to the Game Boy and the play control and challenge lost nothing in the Switch from the NES. However, they were quick to point out the obvious. It would have been nice to have something new from the original game. Over at Nintendo Magazine System, they gave Felix a score of 70%, arguing that the graphics are clear and well-defined. They said that it was easy to get into, a pleasure to control, and there's absolutely no loads to see. But it's all very samey, and there's no real danger posed to our hero. A potentially excellent conversion is all but killed off by a complete lack of pace and the relative ease of the gameplay. In other words, this is a solid enough Game Boy game, but it's probably not the game you're going to want to start with if you end up buying the Felix the Cat collection. Now you may have scoffed the first time you heard about Konami's upcoming collection, because the Tiny Toon Adventures are just right there waiting to be ported to modern consoles. Haters can say all they want about Felix, but he was big enough to warrant his own Nintendo Power cover back in 1992. I bet you can't say the same thing about those Tiny Toons. Well, actually you can, because they were on the cover just six issues later. Honestly, I'm not even sure what point I was trying to make. Did I mention that I was writing this after chasing a turkey and getting no sleep? Trust me, all this is going to be a complete blur when I wake up in the morning, or afternoon, or really whenever I wake up. When we look at what the critics said about Felix the Cat on the Nintendo Entertainment System, they liked it about as much, if not a little bit more, than the Game Boy port. For example, Electronic Gaming Monthly gave the game an average score of 7.25 out of 10, with Steve arguing that the variety afforded by the magical bag of tricks gives the game some character. But what you're left with, or a predominant amount of the play, is a standard side-scroller with some nice graphics and technique. The action never gets too heavy, and the comical overtones, while missing the mark occasionally, are fun. Ed liked the game a little bit more, concluding that Felix is easily one of the most enjoyable NES games to come out this year and definitely worth buying. 
Felix plays well and has lots of different items to find. Great animation and a long adventure will keep the whole family busy for quite some time. You ended up seeing a similar score over at Nintendo Magazine System, who gave it a 71% of just one point from the Game Boy port. Game Informer liked the game a little bit more than that, giving it an average score of 8.25 out of 10. And then there's video games and computer entertainment, which went as high as a 9 out of 10. Just who is this game intended for? Obviously, preteens are the market of choice, though Felix the Cat probably carries as much name recognition with the kindergarten set as former Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter. Felix is as instantly adoptable as a stray kitten in a thunderstorm. And hey, you don't even have to feed it! Now, if you're looking for the highest score, then look no further than, you guessed it, Game Pro. Giving it a 5 out of 5, Bubonic the Blowfrog makes an interesting observation. One important thing to note about the Felix game that is indicative of the comic book and animated cartoon incarnations is the virtual absence of violence. Even the sound never creates the tense and scary mood found in some action games. When you defeat a boss, it explodes, but doesn't die. According to the manual, your foes in the game aren't necessarily enemies, they're more like play friends. Your weapons are called magic items, and believe it or not, the game creators have managed to make even a cannon that shoots balls at you look cute and innocuous. Moreover, the manual comes packaged with an order of form for Master Higgins' 10 tips for responsible gaming. Felix the Cat is fun to play. Its landslide of levels and abundance of magic items will keep folks with even the shortest attention span engaged. The cat is back, and that's perfect for NES gamers everywhere. Look, with GamePro giving it a perfect score in video games and computer entertainment name-dropping former Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter, I honestly don't feel like there's a whole lot for me to add. This is a fun game, but maybe not as fondly remembered as the Disney stuff published by both Capcom and Sega. But hey, at least this gets us one step closer to a Tiny Toons collection, right? Right? Hey, thanks for watching another episode where I analyze classic reviews. Yes, I know I've posted a bunch of these episodes in a row, but hey, it's the holiday week and I just didn't have a whole lot of time to work on proper reviews. Now, here's the question I have for you. If you had a bag full of tricks, what would you pull out of it? Oh man, I can't wait to see what you'd pull out of it in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back next week with reviews. I promise. Look, I really do have a bunch of reviews that are almost done, including Flashback 2 and Prison City. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.